In this video, we will explain how to take an optical prime project of a VMware environment and correctly interpret the capacity figures for the purpose of sizing a new platform to host the existing and future virtual machine workload. This exercise will be very useful during tech refresh scenarios. Many of the slides will contain a significant amount of information. Please feel free to pause the video at any time to read the slide. Let's start with an overview of the storage terms within VMware. A VMware cluster of ESXi hosts will contain one or more data stores. The data store is a virtual concept representing a pool of usable storage that can be accessible by virtual machines running in the cluster. VMware defines a data store as a storage container used to store virtual machine files, templates, and ISO images. The traditional VMware distributed file system that leverages local disks in the ESXi hosts, direct attached storage, or storage area network LUNs is called VMFS and is the most common data store type. Let's take a look at the various types of storage for the physical layer. vSAN is most commonly used in HCI solutions such as VxRail. vSAN leverages disks attached to the ESXi hosts in the cluster to form a highly available and redundant storage pool for the data store. Only one vSAN data store may exist per cluster. For NAS platforms, the data store is hosted on a network file share, generally an appliance. Although in some HCI solutions, the file share is supported by the underlying HCI platform. Common in smaller or lab VMware deployments, the local data store uses disks in the ESXi host and is inaccessible by other nodes in the cluster. Because local data stores cannot be used in highly available configurations or shared across nodes in the cluster, local data stores are generally not used in production environments. Often, storage associated with local data stores is ignored. Virtual volume, also known as VVOL, is less frequently used. VVOL data stores have a direct integration with storage arrays via a storage area network connection. VVOLs were designed to get around limits restricting the number of SAN LUNs that could be connected to an ESXi host. The presence of VVOLs requires that an external storage array is present. Built on top of the physical storage layer, we have the virtual disks. Regardless of the data store type, all data stores essentially are file systems visible to the ESXi hosts. These file systems store all of the files for virtual machines, templates, and ISO images. Every virtual machine has several files stored in the data store. One type of file is known as the virtual disk file. For every virtual disk attached to the virtual machine, there is a virtual disk file. The ESXi host knows the size of the virtual disk file. Some virtual disk files are thin provisioned and some are thick provisioned. A thin provisioned virtual disk file starts small and grows over time as data is written to the disk. An upper limit is placed on the maximum size that the file can grow. We'll cover thin provisioning in more detail in the next section and how it can affect storage sizing. Thick provisioned virtual disk files are created at a static size representing the total capacity of the virtual disk. All virtual disk files have two basic properties. Virtual disk use capacity is the data that has been written to a thin provisioned virtual disk or is the total size of a thick provisioned virtual disk. Virtual disk size is the maximum size that a thin provisioned virtual disk can reach or the size of the thick provisioned virtual disk. For a thick provisioned virtual disk, the used and size properties are the same value. From the virtual disks, we create the guest disks. The guest disk is the perspective of the disk from the operating system running on the guest virtual machine. Guest disks also have two basic properties. Guest disk used capacity is the space currently in use from the perspective of the operating system running on the guest virtual machine. Guest disk size is the provision size of the disk from the perspective of the operating system running on the guest virtual machine. Let's review thin provisioning and how it affects any storage sizing. A thin provisioned virtual disk file starts small and grows over time as data is written to the disk. An upper limit is placed on the maximum size that the file can grow. For example, we have a thin provisioned virtual disk with a maximum size of 100 gigabytes. Let's say that after the operating system and applications are installed, the virtual disk will have a physical size of 20 gigabytes. As we continue to write more data into the virtual disk, for example, another 20 gigabytes, the physical capacity of the virtual disk will grow and will now be 40 gigabytes. 
Let's say that the application in the virtual machine created some temporary files worth 20 gigabytes within the guest virtual machine. Both the guest disk and virtual disk will also grow in capacity to 60 gigabytes. But since these are temporary files, the application has deleted them from disk. Even with the files deleted, the physical capacity of the virtual disk will remain at 60 gigabytes, but the guest disk used capacity has shrunk down to only 40 gigabytes. There is now an empty capacity of 20 gigabytes in this virtual disk, which we refer to as white space. White space is typically not included in any sizing exercise for tech refreshes. If you want to calculate the amount of white space in a virtual disk, you can refer to the Excel spreadsheet and get the values for virtual disk and guest disk used capacities. White space is the virtual disk capacity minus the guest disk used capacity. As applications continue to write to the virtual disk, this virtual disk will eventually be equivalent to a thick provision virtual disk. The virtual disk file never shrinks when data is deleted within the virtual machine. If you are planning to move to a new infrastructure where you simply need the virtual machines migrated, you can consider sizing the storage of the new infrastructure using the guest disk used capacity and add headroom for future growth. Guest disk used capacity information also includes any storage capacity from external iSCSI connections, which we will cover later. Now that we've gone through the basic storage concepts, let's take a look at a report from Optical Prime. Most sizing tools base their calculations on the current guest used disk capacity of the virtual machines plus some future annual growth percentage. This value is pretty easy to find in Optical Prime. The best place to grab this data is from the AIR PowerPoint report. AIR stands for Automated Insights Report. From the virtual overview slide, under VM Storage, you'll be able to see the provisioned and consumed capacity in tibibytes. The consumed capacity is the total of all of the guest used disk capacity for every virtual machine in the system. This includes virtual machines that were idle during the collection. If you do not want to include idle virtual machines, or if you wish to select a subset of virtual machines to include in your calculation, you can use the VMware Excel spreadsheet report, which we will demonstrate later. Do note that these do not consider snapshot policies, ISO storage, or templates. Generally, ISO storage and templates do not take up much data store space, but snapshots can take up a large amount of space. Research the snapshot policy of the environment to understand those storage needs. Let's look at how we can get the same information from the Excel report. In the Excel report, open the VMs tab. You'll see we have the columns for guest VM disk capacity, guest VM disk used, virtual disk size, and virtual disk used. The easiest way to calculate for the totals for these fields is by creating a pivot table. Let's create a pivot table by selecting insert, then pivot table. This will select the entire table we have open. Make sure you create the pivot table in a new worksheet. Let's add a filter that will allow us to choose if we want to calculate capacity for all running and idle VMs, or just the running VMs. Next, add the four capacity fields for guest VM and virtual disks. Place them into the sum value section. Note that the capacities here are all in mibibytes, and we will have to convert them to tibibytes for easier comparison against the report we generated. This gives us the same total capacities as we saw in the AIR report. However, if we only want to include the running VMs, we can update our is running filter and select true. This now gives us the capacity excluding the idle or offline VMs. Both the Optical Prime dashboard and the AIR report will also indicate if guest iSCSI is present. We will need to identify which VMs may have external iSCSI storage. Note that for these VMs that have iSCSI present, the storage capacity from the iSCSI storage will be included in the guest VM disk capacity calculation. This is why we recommend using the guest VM disk capacity information for capacity sizing. To identify these VMs that may have iSCSI connections, we can open the Excel AIR report. This column provides additional information about the virtual machines, including information on iSCSI. In this example, you can see which virtual machines may have external iSCSI storage connections. To further confirm whether these virtual machines have any external storage connected via iSCSI, we can compare the guest disk size versus the virtual disk size. From the general Excel report, Open the VMs tab and locate the storage capacity columns. 
As we understood from the previous sections, the virtual disk size is the maximum size that the virtual disk can become. If the guest disk size is larger than the virtual disk size, then we know that the extra storage capacity is coming from an external source. Let's check if the guest VM disk capacity is larger than the virtual disk size by creating a formula. Once you've created the formula on the first cell, it should cascade down to the succeeding cells. Use the filter and choose iSCSI. This will now only show the virtual machines that may have external storage connections via iSCSI. In this example, the error report indicated seven VMs that may have iSCSI present, and these are the guest VMs that may have external iSCSI connections. Next, let's look at the total physical storage capacity. In the Live Optics and Optical Prime dashboard, you'll get information on the total storage capacity within the project. Keep in mind that the totals shown are based not only on the data stores in the project, but also any LUNs attached to the ESXi hosts which are not participating in the data stores. A good indicator of LUNs that are not part of a data store is any local disk with a name that begins with the prefix NAA, followed by a long series of numbers and letters. We'll show some examples later. When migrating to a new virtual environment, the non-data store storage is not relevant in the future sizing. Let's now look at the Excel report and we'll demonstrate how we can calculate the total, used, and free capacities. This will help you further understand which storage capacity information you should be using for your sizing. Open up the general Excel report and go to the cluster disks tab. Here you'll see the columns for capacity, free capacity, and used capacity in gigabytes. These devices are part of the cluster disks and are shared across multiple servers. When calculating for the storage capacity, you should only include each unique device once. The easiest way to calculate this is to create a pivot table. While in the cluster disks tab, click on insert, then pivot table. It will automatically select the entire table. Ensure that we create the pivot table on a new worksheet. Click on OK. Select device name and put it under rows. Then choose Use Capacity, Free Capacity, and Capacity and place all three under the summation values. You'll notice that each device name will only appear once under column A. Notice here on rows 31 and 32, we have device names that start with NAA. These devices are not part of any data store. These devices are typically excluded from any capacity calculation in a tech refresh situation. You can filter these out by going to the top of the pivot table and deselecting all the devices that start with NAA. However, for this lesson, we want to get the full physical storage capacity and compare it against the dashboard and error report, so we'll include these devices. Now, we don't want to sum of each of these device names because in the cluster tab, each device name can appear more than once if it is shared across multiple servers. We only need the actual capacity of each clustered disk. To do this, we will change the field value setting of each of the capacity fields and specify for the pivot table to only get the max value. Click on one of the capacity fields under the summation value section. Click value field settings and change the summarize value field by to max. Do this for all three fields. This will now reflect the correct capacity for each of the device. However, if you scroll down the table, you'll notice the row labeled grand total. You might mistake this for the sum of the capacities, but it is not because we chose max as the summation value. Since we need to get the sum of the used, free, and total capacities, we will need to perform the sum ourselves. While at the bottom of the table, create this formula using the sum function and apply it across all three columns. Notice the values are different from the grand total indicated in the table. These are the sum of each of the capacity information. Note that these are in gigabytes. Divide it by 1024 to convert it to tibibytes. However, this is not complete. The values in the physical capacity information in the dashboard and error report include all physical capacity, which will also include any local disk capacity. In the server disks tab, you'll also see the same columns of capacity, free capacity, and used capacity of the local disks in the hosts. Get a total of each of these columns. We will now add these to the values we calculated in the pivot table. Make sure you're adding the values that are in gigabytes. Convert it to tibibytes afterwards to compare it against the dashboard and error report. Now, let's compare the final values. 
Once you've added the storage capacities from all the cluster disks and the local disks, you'll get the same values for used, free, and total storage capacity as reported in the Air Report and the Optical Prime dashboard. Remember that these totals include all the physical storage capacity in the project and will include storage capacity that are not part of a data store. This exercise is simply to demonstrate and help you understand how the total physical capacity data is derived. The Live Optics Air report already provides this information for you without needing you to calculate it manually. This diagram provides a review of what we covered in this lesson, illustrating the various storage capacity information provided by Live Optics. Do note, however, that guest VM disk capacity and guest VM disk used information is only accurate if VM Tools is installed within the guest VM. VM Tools allows the vCenter to see the guest VM capacity as seen by the guest operating system. We highly recommend that VM Tools be installed in all virtual machines. Here is an example from the Excel report. The virtual machines in this list that are highlighted in green do not have VM tools installed, and you'll notice that the guest VM disk capacities are the same as the virtual disk capacities. This is because vCenter is not able to determine the storage capacity as seen by the guest operating system. You should now understand how to manually calculate the necessary storage capacities from the Excel report. The Live Optics dashboard and the corresponding Air report already provides this information, but it's good knowledge to understand how these values are derived. We hope you found this learning useful. Thank you for using Live Optics.